Hey everybody and welcome to episode 101 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and this is where I show you recipes from my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, that will help you achieve and maintain ultimate weight loss. So this is a very special episode because I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to be making for my family for Thanksgiving dinner. So instead of one recipe, I'm going to show you four recipes. So we've got a lot to do today, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is start heating up my pan. Now I'm going to be making balsamic Dijon glazed Brussels sprouts, stuffed acorn squash with a wild rice apple and cherry stuffing, cranberry relish, and pumpkin pie ice cream. So the, while this pan is heating up, the first thing I'm going to do is make my Brussels sprouts. Now, if you watch my television show, Healthy Living with Chef AJ, you probably saw me make them with Dr. Roy Artal on episode 107. And if you haven't, I encourage you to watch all 13 episodes because it's, a, it's just a wonderful cooking show. In that show, I showed you how to make them in the oven. And I have made some in the oven. And yes, they don't look very good right now. And the blackened isn't acrylamides. Don't worry, this is the balsamic vinegar. But you certainly can make them in the oven and they will be delicious. But an easier way to make them, sorry about the noise, in my opinion, is using your air fryer. So what we're gonna be doing is using this wonderful Go Wise air fryer. I think it's about 5.4 or 5.3 quarts. And we are going to do the same recipe. So I've cut these Brussels sprouts in half. And just to show you, it's very easy. I just cut off the little, just a little bit of the stem, not much. And I save this in my scrap bag to make broth. And then I cut them in either halves or fourths, depending on how big I feel like eating them. The thing is, it doesn't really matter what size you use as long as they're about the same size for even cooking. You can do this with frozen Brussels sprouts, it's just that it won't have the same kind of texture and it will take a lot longer to cook. So again, we're just using the original recipe. We're using the stone ground salt-free West Gray mustard, which you can get easily on Amazon. And honestly, I don't measure anymore. The recipe's in the book and I'll be posting the page numbers. Unfortunately, I can't type out recipes. I do this from my phone and I don't have my book on my phone, but I don't even measure anyway. So this is the Napa Valley Naturals. It's the best bang for your buck. I love all the reduced balsamics from all the wonderful companies I've told you about. But for everyday cooking, this is my go-to because it is the most affordable. It's delicious. You want to make sure you want to get the one that's 25 stars aged 18 years because they have another one with a similar label that uh, does not taste like this. There's no sugar added. I got the approval from Dr. Goldhammer that it's okay to use. It's made just from grapes and it's thick, it's delicious, I love it. And it's great, I usually mix it with lime juice actually because it almost is a little bit too sweet for me that way. So I have my mixture, and by the way, this will be delicious on any vegetables. You know, when people tell me, oh my God, I can't eat a pound of vegetables, I'm like, this isn't even enough for me, this is a pound. It's like no food when it cooks down. So you wanna just distribute the marinade evenly. This is great on everything. We do this recipe at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico where I have the privilege of presenting one or two times a year for the past six or seven years. My next date is April 13th, 2019 if you want to join me. They don't always have Brussels sprouts so the people pick from the garden what they want. They've done this on white turnips, they've done it on broccoli, cauliflower. It's this marinade from Dr. Artal is delicious on everything. So all I'm going to do is going to put this in the air fryer and listen guys I don't have time to read those books so I just do everything at 400 for 20 minutes so I'm just going to put it in and then I'm going to put it up to that's uh, 20 minutes over here and oops well it's at 370 I accidentally didn't put it at 400 but that's okay it'll be fine so now this has been heating up and how do you know if it's ready well I know you know if you put a little drop of water here and it makes this little bead, it's ready. So we do a lot of sauteing without oil and I have many videos on my YouTube channel that shows you how to do this. So again, you don't need oil, you don't need anything. If you want to use liquid, you can use water or no sodium vegetable broth. But I'm going to start with the mirepoix. And mirepoix is a French word and you can buy it already made up for you at Trader Joe's and other stores as well. Carrots, onion, and celery and I'm just gonna put it in my preheated pan. Always get the best pan you can afford. I'm using this Pampered Chef pan that I've had for 20 years. It's no longer available, I'm told. 
it's in perfect condition, and we're just gonna saute the mirepoix. Now, if it starts to stick, all I do is just add a little bit of water. And we're just gonna saute this until soft. Now, there's also gonna be some garlic in here, but we don't wanna add the garlic until the onion is nice and soft because garlic can burn. And so what I'm going to do is chop my garlic and I'm just gonna put it in this wonderful little machine that I got from Tupperware because I have a problem with my hand occasionally. It's called trigger thumb and it's just so much easier because I can get very, very, very finely minced garlic and it's so easy. Look how fine. I could not do that with my knife, especially in the condition my, my thumb sometimes is. I actually use this machine every single day because Bailey eats carrots at every meal and it chops them very fine just the way she likes it. So I just continue to saute this and every now and then I might add a little bit of water. So what this is going to go in, this is going to be the stuffing for the acorn squash, which I've already cooked in advance. If you need to see me cook a whole squash, I recommend you also watch episode 107 of Healthy Living with Chef AJ, which is now on YouTube. You don't have to watch it on Foodie TV or any of those other stations that at first when it came out, you did. And I, I show you how I cook this in the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker. I like the eight quart because I can cook several of these acorn squashes at once. You can certainly cook it in the oven and roast it, but it's just so easy to do it in the pressure cooker, which is why I recommend the eight quart. I've cooked four of them and three of them are already cut in half. This isn't my most beautiful work. I was a little bit in a hurry, but here's one that I didn't cut and I'll just show you how I do that. Basically, I, and I'm using small ones because I think it's easier for everybody to get their own rather than do a big one and try to cut it. So you just want to avoid this stem. You cut it in half, avoiding the stem on one side, and then you simply take out the seeds. And that's where you're going to stuff it in. And you know, you can, if, if they're not all the same size, you can take out a little bit of the squash part and actually mix that in your stuffing if you feel like um, you want more surface area. So, but I like more squash than stuffing. Now the stuffing has is going to have in it more things than what you see here, which is the base. If you wanted to add mushrooms, you certainly could. I didn't have them in this particular recipe, but you always can add them. They have great flavor and great health benefits. But what we are going to add, as soon as this is cooked, is some wild rice and some apples, because it's just really delicious in there. Let me just put this one right here. And again, if, you know, when I'm not in a hurry, not that I'm in a hurry, but I mean, I don't want to keep you guys here forever, then I take a little bit more time trying to get these perfectly, but they will be perfect when they're done. And so every now and then I just add a little bit more liquid and I'm continuing to saute. I'm going to add that garlic in a little bit, but while I'm continuing to do that, why not do something else? So while the Brussels sprouts are cooking, I'm going to move on to the cranberry relish. I call this cranberry relish because instead of dates, I'm using pears. Nothing wrong with dates, but people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program often have a hard time moderating their use of dates because they are so sweet. They're about 70% sugar, and they're, they're actually quite caloric. They're to the right of the red line. They're 1,300 calories per pound, which is pretty calorically dense compared to fruit, which is about two or 300. So we're using pears instead of dates because if you buy dates, there's an old adage, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth, you'll probably end up eating a lot of them. And pears don't seem to be a problem for most people. Now, if you use just regular pears, it'll be very good. But if you want it really sweet, what you want to do is roast your pears. Roasting, whether it's a vegetable or a fruit, brings out the natural sweetness and the natural sugar. I did this on my Krispies tray just because that's what was the first thing I pulled in. I mean, this is almost like dried fruit. Not quite, but it is. So you can use fresh pears. That's what we do at Rancho La Puerta. You can use the jarred pears from Trader Joe's, which have no added sugar, or the canned pears from a regular grocery store. Just make sure it says no added sugar. So in the food processor, that I have fitted with the S blade. I've already got my cranberries. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to process those first. So you can 
see, nice and processed. And now I'm going to add my pears. Again, if dates aren't a problem for you, it's just easier to use the recipe in unprocessed. It's quite delicious. And now I'm going to add my oranges. And if the oranges are organic, you can certainly add the zest if you want more of an orangey flavor. These oranges are pretty small, and I hope they're sweet because you know what? When you're using fresh fruit, your product is only as sweet as the fruit you're using. And you know, you can make these recipes your own. I know that some people like to add fresh ginger to their cranberry relish. They like to add things like even a little bit of lime juice. There's no reason to buy that stuff in a can. This is quick and easy, and even when you do cook relish, it's got like a cup of sugar. There's no reason to use sugar, guys. You know how bad it is, and uh, just fuels cravings and addictions. So this is looking a little bit nice and getting soft. So. you could smell it. it. It smells so delicious and it's so easy to make and I'm going to put it in a pretty bowl now. And this is going to be a wonderful accompaniment to really everything. In our dinner it will be to the squash but this is so good just on mashed potatoes or let me tell you something. This is delicious on mashed orange yams as well. This can be delicious on your morning oatmeal and you can use this to make other recipes in my book. I have recipes where this is used as part of a cobbler and, and part of muffins, so it's, it's very versatile. And uh, my husband loves it just, just on its own. By the way, it's also really good on banana ice cream. So we'll just have that like that, make it nice and pretty. And if I, I, I would garnish this with maybe some orange zest or a couple of fresh cranberries. So we're doing pretty good here. You see, this kind of cooking doesn't have to take a long time, but you do need some rudimentary cooking skills, I think, if you want to be healthy, and especially if you want to overcome food addiction. Really what's taking the longest here is the carrots. If you can see that the celery and the onion is already soft, but carrots are a little bit denser, so they take a little bit longer. I probably could cover that to get it to cook sooner, but we have a few other things we're doing, so I'm just going to put this over here for now. So now I'm going to show you, it's been about 10 minutes, and every, when you use the air fryer in the middle, this one's a little stuck, be careful it's hot, kind of just shake it, move it around a little, and it's going to go, it remembers the setting and it's going to go exactly there. So at this point, I can add the garlic because we've got the carrots almost done. You can see how nice and fine this little machine chopped it. And again, garlic is one of those things, if you like it, use a lot of it. It's especially important, in my opinion, when we're doing what we call SOS-free or SOFAs-free cooking. SOS is sugar, oil, salt, and SOFAs is sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt. So really, you really do need onion and garlic, in my opinion, if you want flavor. So what we're gonna add now are the apples and I love this little chopping machine that I've shown you on previous videos because it also has the measuring cup on it so you don't have to dirty another measuring cup and I'm using the larger setting but you could also just grate them by hand or use your food processor so I'm adding the apples now I'm just going to stir that around now here's the thing this is a holiday, so I'm gonna really splurge. I'm not gonna splurge on animal products or sugar or oil, flour, alcohol, salt, but I've been at my ideal weight now. I've been slender now for seven of these 58 years of my life after being overweight or obese for 52. So I am gonna add a little dried fruit to it. Remember, it's 1,300 calories a pound. You never wanna add it if it's a trigger. 
but I am going to add some of these dark, sweet, unsulfured, unsweetened cherries, a six ounce bag from Trader Joe's. I have a few cherries in the bag whole, because I'm going to use this as a garnish, but to get the most bang for my buck, I've cut these up really small. And the truth is, is when you cut them up small, you could actually use less. And that's why if you notice my recipes, like my famous cram muffins that were named as an homage to Dr. Lyle and the cram circuit, it's really, a, you know, one of the best carrot cakes I've ever tasted. People have told me the same. I like to use currants instead of raisins because they're smaller, they disperse better, and you're using less. So I actually may not use the whole cup, so we'll see after I put them in. You know, the truth is, well, yes, I will. I'll use the whole thing, but I still like to cut it small. So I'm adding the cherries. And now I'm going to add my wild rice. So as I've taught you in previous videos, always batch cook. So when I make something, I always freeze it. This was frozen in exactly the amount that I need for the recipes that I'm going to make. And I'm going to add it now. just stir oh my spices of course and the only thing else that comes in here is the fresh herbs which I'm not going to add actually I'm going to turn the oven off now or the stove I'm not going to add them until I'm ready to stuff them this is this this by itself by the way you could just eat this as a dish you know eat it over some greens or something it's really really quite delicious I'm taking it off the heat now. I'm going to add my fresh herbs. I love using fresh herbs. Again, especially when you do salt free cooking, you need to add the flavor somewhere. So this is just a nice alternative to bread stuffing. Of course, it's gluten free. Everything I do is gluten free. And you can see it's kind of pretty. I like my food to be pretty, especially if I'm serving it to other people. For myself, it doesn't have to be that pretty. And I know the Brussels sprouts aren't pretty, but I'm going to make them a little prettier by glazing them. So now I want to stuff my squash. And there probably will be some stuffing left over, but that's okay. Now some of these are going to be easier to stuff than others because of the nature of the squash. And that's okay because we'll have extra to bake and serve on the side with the meal. And if it's easier for you to just buy a very large squash, like a butternut, and stuff that, you don't have to go to all the trouble of individual ones. Just put it in. Like that. And again, if for some reason you didn't like wild rice, I think it's delicious, it's toothsome, it's so hearty. You could use regular rice, you could use quinoa. You could use buckwheat. I just think wild rice is delicious. I have two episodes, two episodes. I have two recipes for how to cook wild rice in the book. Very easy, especially if you have an instant pot. And like I said, the only thing, mushrooms could have been very good in here. I, I should have probably used some of the dried ones. But you can see that we do have a lot of stuffing left over, and that's okay. And we'll still eat it, of course. Um, this would just make more, but I'm only making one tray, so this would be make enough for, for two trays. And again, we want to stuff it as nicely as we can. If you live in Los Angeles, I'm teaching this as a hands-on class at Boulevard Kitchen on November 17th, and I think maybe again November 24th. So there we go. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the oven. And then when it's done, we're going to show you how we plate it and what it looks like. So let's see how our Brussels sprouts are still cooking. And I've got one more recipe to make, and that is going to be the pumpkin pie ice cream. So a little of this. Okay. Let me just change machines and get my blender. Now, I actually served the pumpkin pie ice cream to Charles, my husband, last night for dessert. And I didn't tell him what it what it was made with, and I said, would you like some pumpkin pie ice cream? And he said, yes, and he ate it, and I said, was that good? And he goes, yes. And I said, what do you think it was made with? And he said, pumpkin, and I said, no. So, there is a secret ingredient in my pumpkin pie ice cream. It contains no pumpkin, and it's not because there's anything unhealthy about pumpkin, but what happened is I wanted to make pumpkin pie ice cream, 
And during the time of year that I wanted to make it, there was no pumpkin. Excuse me one second. I need to get something from the freezer. So there was no pumpkin. And I was really craving that flavor. And, sorry, I forgot to get one thing from here. Always have your stuff out, guys. That's called mise en place. And I did it mostly, except for forgetting one ingredient, my pumpkin pie spice. There we go. And so I noticed by using frozen carrots, which you can get any time of year, it tasted exactly like it because it was the seasonings that made it taste so pumpkin-y. And what's good about using carrots is it's a way to get in more vegetables. Nothing wrong with pumpkin. Pumpkin's a starchy vegetable. It's about 400 calories a pound. Carrots are non-starchy vegetable, lower in caloric density, but we're always trying to get people to eat more vegetables. And some of the people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program like to do what's known as a fruit and vegetable day, sometimes just for discipline or as a reset, and they could have this because it's basically just fruit and vegetables. So I'm going to be using, I have a little bit of unsweetened non-dairy milk in my canister, and I'm going to be using this pumpkin pie spice from Local Spicery. And they have a bunch of really good salt-free seasonings. And if you use my name, Chef AJ, at localspicery.com, you get 10% off. They do everything in small batches. And their pumpkin pie spice is just one of the best. So I know I'm going to be using it in this recipe. With the non-dairy milk, I'm going to be adding oranges. And first I'm going to blend this because then the icy part will blend a lot easier. Even though this is a Vitamix, I still do it in stages sometimes. Well, that's the thing. Always make sure you've got the top on. This is real cooking. So now I'm going to add my frozen carrots and my frozen bananas. So you want, you want them frozen, or else it won't be thick. Or you'll have to just freeze it to get it thick. All right. So. There we have it. Now this is a little bit, probably a little bit less thick than I usually have it. And that is because I did not have oranges that were the right size. So what do you do if it's too, not thick enough? Well, we could add more ingredients to thicken it. Or, guess what? We'll just, you can see it is really thick, but it's not as thick as I would have liked. So guess what? Just serve it like this until the rest thickens up in the freezer. So we've got a little bit of a, a smoothie here. So that's what we do. Put a little cinnamon on top. I do have a pumpkin pie smoothie in my book on process that actually uses pumpkin. But this, nobody will have to know that it's carrots. So go figure. All right, so I'm gonna bake the squash. We're gonna come back and show you what the whole meal looks like finished. So these are done. So come back in just a second and I'll show you everything when it's done. Well, I just took the squash out of the oven. Look how beautiful it looks. Can you get a close up of this? The rice is crispy and crunchy and I garnished it with just a little fresh parsley and a piece of the dried cherry. So I'm just gonna plate up my plate right here with this beautiful cranberry relish a nice big scoop on the side it gets so nice and thick and then a few of these balsamic dijon glazed brussels sprouts oh yum I'll be honest i was snacking on them while i was waiting for it to finish and then I like people to garnish their own. I love using the Beemon Paz pumpkin pie spice infused vinegar on this. And I like to put it in a squeeze bottle so that I can direct it right on top of this. Just a little bit on the squash like that. And I let people do it themselves. And if you saw earlier, 
the ice cream wasn't firm enough because I had too much liquid, but I put it in the freezer and it firmed up really nice, the pumpkin pie ice cream. And I took some of the ice cream and I put it between two of the pumpkin pie bites that I showed you a few episodes ago. So there you have it, a delicious, sofa-free Thanksgiving meal. I wish you and your family a happy, healthy, and abstinent holiday. Take care. Thanks for watching. I'm Chef AJ and I make healthy taste delicious so that you can have both the health and the body that you so richly deserve. Bye.